let's go ahead and talk to Andy in Texas. It works. Can you hit the talk? Let's see if Andy can hear us as well. Oh, let's let's uh, actually get Andy on the line. That would help. Andy, <laughs> can you hear us? Oh, thank goodness. I'm going to turn up your volume just a bit. I turned it down so that people wouldn't be bothered by the sound of me trying to call back in. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Good, and hopefully Beautiful. people will be able to hear you as well. If you're having trouble hearing them, just let me know in the live chat, and we'll get this fixed as soon as possible. Yep. Andy, thank you for calling back. Yeah, of course. I'm curious. Why Why is I a terrifying call? What? Oh, no. Why are terrifying, you terrifying call, call, as in we have to venture into the technical world of call in studio, which has not been very nice to uh, us yeah, this yeah. week. Oh, okay. oh gosh, okay. yeah. I, 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 I was confused. I no, was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, You're a nice guy, man. No, during the intro, uh, we heard the do da dum, which is the sound of absolute terror <laughs> when, we, uh, when we've oh. lost the link to call in studio. Uh, so that was it. But no, no, no. You're you're a sweetheart, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys got it worked out. Cheers. What did you want to talk about today? Yeah. So I guess I just kind of wanted to, um, at the risk of of you know, sounding like potentially like a broken record here, I kind of wanted to continue with the topic that we had, we had been discussing last week. Um, I know that when I ended the call. When I ended the call, you guys had, had mentioned that I might have touched on something that was worthy of, I guess, bringing back and discussing. Um, and that would be this idea that this idea that I think we should be treating humans and animals um, with respect, and that means, you know, not killing them um, sure. as we wouldn't kill a human. Well, um, let, I, and, and, and I guess that that. Like, that's a great topic. Before we dive into it, I do kind of just want to address something. Uh, we got a good bit of feedback. We ran a poll and we're just like, hey, you know, how many vegan calls should we be taking on the show? Because this is new new territory for most uh, like skeptical atheist call-in shows. Don't yeah, necessarily it's, it's not taken as much. And so I think, you know, because we're having this ongoing conversation with you, we're happy to talk to you. Um, but just if other people are watching and they want to continue having those vegan conversations, I think we're going to dedicate some time at a future point to do like a really cool collab where we can you know zero in and advertise that out um and so if if you are not andy and you're wanting to call in uh let's figure out a time that we can call in and then and then make that a thing maybe that, get that, some uh some of those more prominent atheist vegan activists on, yeah to sit in and, and hang out show. with us yeah, we'll, we'll have to reach out to them invite, you know, well, they haven't people, said yes yet let's people, not, yeah, yeah so out there. yeah that said andy thank you for, for letting us uh Go ahead. What? So, so, so you wanted to talk about? Well, yeah. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you guys for letting me bring the topic back. I know yeah. it could be, you know, like I said, I know it could be kind of um, at the risk of sounding like a broken record. And um, but yeah, just uh, but I, I essentially ended the call last week uh, saying that you know when we look at humans, you know, I, I used the example of um, members of the LGBT community just because the the phrasing in the catechism of the Catholic church was very specific with that particular marginalized group where we, where the church teaches that we should be treating in our encounters with members of that community, treating them with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. And I tried to draw a parallel with animals in the sense that I think we should be treating them with respect and compassion too. And that would, that would kind of go against this idea of killing them and consuming their, their, Flesh, right. Fair. Um, um, so Andy, I, I, I do want to I, I want to jump in real quick with an observation here. And this is not at you. Um, I do not necessarily uh, ascribe any of these things to you. But if we are talking about the catechism and Catholicism, talking about how we need to be nice to marginalized groups, uh, let's remember who marginalized those groups in the first place, which historically has been Christianity and the Catholic Church if we're talking about historically yeah so I mean I get it and modern Catholics who want to pursue that absolutely great um, but to have it codified in the Catholic Church as oh by the way you see these people who don't have the e equal rights or don't have protections or are looked down on let's be nice to them but maybe not dismantle the systems that create that disparity in the first place like 
I get where you're coming from. I think you probably agree with me on that topic because you seem like a cool guy. Um, but that it would not be fair for me to not bring up that disparity. Uh, yeah, I understand. And I, I totally, I totally get it. I think it would probably be a whole separate discussion about, Oh yeah. You know, um, yeah. So I, I guess for the sake of this discussion, I'll just, I'll kind of pull back and just say that use humanity, humans as a whole, right. And mm -hmm. that we, we treat, we should be treating each other as a whole, right. With, I think you would agree that, you know, treating each other with respect and compassion is, you know, it's kind of how we make our way in this world. It's kind of how we keep moving forward. Right. Yeah. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't dream, right. We wouldn't dream of if, if I were to show you some hypothetical world where there were humans that were being, um, you know, mass bred into existence and then killed, you would presumably think that was horrifying. Right. Sure. But you don't, but at least at this point, and you know, at least since our last discussion, you, you don't when it comes to the animals. Well, um, th that's, you know, that's not true. Right. That's, that's yeah. It, it's, 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 it's not about compassion and respect. So let me, uh, so I, and I tried to give counter examples, but I can give another one right now. Um, let's look at lab grown meat, which is becoming a thing. People are growing meat, not connected to an animal in a lab that is edible. Um, if someone were to offer you a burger, you know, with real meat, but that meat was grown in a lab, would you eat it? Um, I think it would. Hmm. That's a good question. I think it would probably depend on if it was a meat that was completely grown uh, from, let's say, cells of an animal that had already died and they just took the cells after the animal had died and they ended up growing a whole laboratory of meat because of that. I would probably say no, because I'm, I'm not again, necessarily against the idea of eating meat in the same way that if I were to come across a deer on the side of the road that had been hit by a car, and it was dead. I don't see any moral problem with taking the meat from that animal uh, because it, it's me taking the meat is just something that has happened after the death has already occurred by another meat. It's okay. more so this idea. Well, it's more so this idea that the the meat is coming from a specific place where okay. there is exploitation. Where well, so oh, can sorry, I? Yeah, no, it's okay. It. Just, just a little. I, I just want to. I just yeah. want to point out there. And, so and many things I said. I know. I know. I know. Um, I, the, 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 the reason that I'm bringing this up, and the reason I'm really glad you answered that, is because what we've just done is we've divorced the idea of meat consumption from the idea of compassion and respect. Because the meat consumption does not imply a lack of empathy or compassion or respect. You just exa you just agreed and gave me examples of the, the deer that got hit by the car, right? You can take that meat. Eating the meat does not mean you lack empathy or compassion or respect. And so it sounds like it's not a veganism as a kind of I don't want to eat meat type of argument. It's a, a, a treatment of living animals and a disgust for factory farming. Would that, would that better kind of encapsulate where, where, where the, the issue is, at least for you? Uh, I, yeah, I, I think that would probably encapsulate it, but at least this is just my, I'm not speaking for all of you. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no yeah, absolutely. Opinion. We're talking to Andy. Yeah. Stance on it. Yeah, yeah. I think that would probably encapsulate it better. Okay. okay. Well, I can tell you, like, I was, I was thinking about our call from the other week, Andy, over the course of this week, because I do take this home, then I think about it, and I mull over it. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I was thinking, well, you know what? Come to think of it, I get all my meat from local, uh, free-range, organic, humane farmers. Like, my the, the subscription that I have that allows me to eat meat, which isn't, frankly, that often, um, is all 100% organic, free range. The animals had awesome lives. They were not factory farmed, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then I was like, well, so I, I, I should be okay then, at least better than other. But then I was like, wait, it costs me $200 a box. Oh, 
And there I hit another issue, which is I can say I'm against factory farming and I don't eat factory farmed meat. But then I have to say, but I also make enough money that I can afford to not do that. Yeah, super privileged position. Yeah, like I am super privileged for the fact that I can order my my humanely grown and uh, cared for meat products to my door for over $200. Like that's a lot. And it's thanks to the job that I have outside of this that allows me to do that. But a lot of people don't have that option, right? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, I, 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 I would just say that it's a position that, yeah, granted, most people aren't going to be able to be in. Um, but even those who are in that position, who are fortunate enough to be in that position like yourself, I would say that when we look at things like free range and organic and, um, you know, humanely raised or whatever, whatever tag you want to throw on it, at the end of the day, all those animals, right, all those animals, one, were brought into existence for a specific purpose, which is mainly to be exploited for their bodies. And two, they all end up in the same place. So all, so all the meat that you consume, at the end of the day, it still goes to the same place of slaughter as the dude who went and got Burger King and had the Whopper, right? Um, which well, for me I, is feel very like, I feel like we made, we made a really important distinction earlier, which is factory farming specifically, and now we're going past that, and you just kind of brought it back to that. Um, so I do want to make sure we're maintaining that level of nuance, because I think it's important, because I agree with you that people who are just like, haha, I love eating cow as their example, or like their argument to a vegan person who is like actually making good points is wrong like that's not a good that's not a good faith way to have an argument yeah. i want to have a good faith argument with you but we need to be nuanced here if we're going to do that speaking of nuance uh andy do you eat cashews drink cashew milk as an uh, alternative to milk products would you absolutely soy soy cashew do you know that, that yeah. over half of the world's cashew production is concentrated in vietnam india and the ivory coast and they employ basically slave labor to consume to create cashew uh milk and and stuff we eat with cashews Most, and it is not so ever. it is so toxic that people are burned <laughs> and actually have physical injuries from harvesting cashews and i even read something the other day and i'll have to find the link and put it in the description they actually employ mentally ill people from nearby asylums to harvest these cashews because they no person with opportunity to say no would want to do it so they're essentially employing slaves from mental facilities to hurt themselves to create the amount of cashews that we need to create things like cashew milk. Yeah, it's, I mean, it could be, you, you hear stories about this, um, that um, on the, you know, when you hear them at least, or read the stories, uh, they kind of make you recoil. Um, I would say that, and I would say I'm not opposed to, if someone can point me to like a legitimate source and say, hey, this product that you're buying there is now a direct link that we can show you to where there is a tremendous amount of suffering involved in it. Chocolate. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm not opposed Yeah, I'm not opposed to giving up that product. It's the same thing with, like, soy, right? Like, people, because for a long time I would drink soy milk, and then people started to, to, to highlight the fact that despite the fact most of the soy that is grown is fed to livestock, it's still a major cause of rainforest deforestation. The fact that all the rainforest is getting cleared out for these soybean farms. And I didn't want to contribute even <laughs> in a little bit to that, which is why I altered from soy and started drinking things like oat milk or cashew milk. So if someone can show me like, hey, this, this cashew milk that you're buying, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of human suffering that is going into it. Yeah. And, you know, this is a clear, you know, footage of it and all that. I'm not opposed to giving up cashew milk. Um. Right. But my point is it, coconut milk, they're, uh, the P-E-T-A, PETA, 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 PETA. It's not how you say it. Um, that, that, that's how they pronounce their acronym. Okay. PETA has 
repeatedly pinged coconut milk producers for forcing monkeys to pick their coconuts for them. Again, Are you serious? Yes. Under, <laughs> under really terrible conditions. Essentially enslaving monkeys to pick coconuts for the coconut milk. I mean... That's wild. Yeah, it is. Um, that's like a Wicked Witch of the West. I kind of want, I, like... Fly, my pretty. Yeah, okay. I'm not, not going to lie. I'm kind of <laughs> fantasizing about that for a second. I know it's mean. So here's <laughs> here's the deal, Andy. The reason I'm bringing this up is not to say there there's a problem in other areas too, therefore your concerns are invalid, right? That would be whataboutism. That would be a Tukukwe fallacy. That's not what I'm doing here. What I'm trying to do is bring this nuance to the conversation. Yes, absolutely. I agree that factory farming is disgusting. And when I can, I avoid that as much as possible. I even pay a lot of money out of pocket to avoid that. That said, pretending like that is the only area where we are seeing not just animal cruelty, but human cruelty across the board, especially in the production of vegan-based uh, food, food products, is a... a it's a larger conversation to have. So I would absolutely have that conversation. Maybe not on this show right now because we want to move on to other calls and we will have a vegan focused maybe a week, week or yeah. two in the future. Um, but my point here is that we need that nuance, right? And we can't just say if you don't do X, then everything else is solved. If anything, doing X will perpetuate Y and Z to the point where they become issues themselves. And it's sticky. It's awful. It's yeah. It's I, how we function in a world where one thing must die for other things to live, even if we're talking about plants, right? So yeah. it's it's rough. And 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 before we go, um, because we're kind of kind of be putting a, a lid on on vegan calls for a little bit, so that we can have kind of a a more focused episode or so on this in the future. Um, Andy, um, you are Catholic, is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, so you disagree with me on the God question, right? I do disagree with you on the God question. Okay, and you disagree with me on uh, the meat thing, right? Uh, I do, yeah. Okay, so from people on very different sides of things, um, can we can we agree on a couple of things? Because I really, really, I'm I'm seeing a whole lot of really crappy arguments on both sides, especially in the comments. Like we respect each other, and we're not seeing that in the comments under these videos, and right. it's a shame. And so, can we can we yeah, agree on a yeah. couple real basic things? Because I'd really love to, on both sides of the aisle, condemn some really shitty behavior on our sides. Can we do that together, really yeah, quick? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'll start on my end. Uh, like V said, when somebody says yum, yum, meat is good, go cry. That's not a good argument. You're not helping anybody. You're just telling everybody what a jerk you are. Stop it. Just stop it. It's not, I, I don't know why it's not funny <laughs> and it's not helping anybody. It just makes you a dick. Um, on the, the vegan end. Uh, there was somebody who had said, well, why aren't we talking about the health benefits of eating vegan overeating meat? In all caps, by the way, which means you're a gentleman who can, who uh, obviously has a, has a, you know. Gentleman uh, and a scholar. Yeah, refined, you know, <laughs> we should definitely talk to that person. Um, whether or not a vegan diet is more healthy than one that includes meat has nothing to do with the ethical and moral implications of eating meat that we're talking about. Also, technically, you can just eat Oreos your entire life and be a vegan, and that's not very healthy. <laughs> but, 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 it's true. <laughs> but, but, but health, health aside, health aside, um, whether or not a thing is healthy does not mean that it is moral. And so if someone is calling and is pissed off that we're not talking about the health benefits of one kind of diet or another. Okay, now my mic is too loud. If, if, if we're, uh, yeah, talking about the health benefits of one diet or another. That's mine. Oh, I bumped you up and bumped, uh, uh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> that does not actually impact the moral or ethical dilemmas that we're talking about. So if you're a vegan on the forums and you're saying, hey, you know, everything's unethical. Look, it's healthier to eat vegan. That makes zero sense. Stop it. If you're talking about ethics and morality, talk about ethics and morality. It doesn't have anything to do with your dietary, like what's going to make you lose weight. 
Um, Andy, are there any others that you can think of? V? Uh, I would just, I would just say that for, you know, for, for vegans out there, you know, just remember, you know, when we're talking about empathy, I guess, remember that you weren't always vegan, right? Um, I wasn't always a vegan. And I know that if someone were to, you know, come at me with a hot take, you know, you know, um, you know, just yelling facts at me and getting in my face about it whenever I was in a vegan, it would definitely turn me off too. So just try to remember, I, I guess I, when I have these conversations, I try to put myself in the place of Andy five years ago when I wasn't, you know, didn't hold the views that I hold now, when I didn't eat the food that I did, that I do now, and just try to go from a conversation, the go through the conversation from that point of remembering back to that time, having that sort of empathy. Cheers. Wonderful. Cheers to that. Absolutely. And, um, and for, for those and, of you... And, oh, go ahead. And by the way, guys, if you ever do decide, just a little, just a little parting offer, if you ever do decide to, to make the change, let me know. I, I do live in the, the Austin area, and I will be more than happy to give you guys a complete list of the <laughs> best vegan restaurants that you can go to in the area, all right? So, nice. Andy, we would absolutely take you up on it. Um, regardless, hey, we'd like to take you up on a beer if you're in the Austin area, period. Oh, yeah. Then. And, like, this is something else to take away. Even if you're not going, like, quote-unquote, full vegan, I've, I've, most of my di like weekly dinners are now vegetarian or vegan just because that's how I've decided to do things. Yeah. If you have awesome vegan that's restaurant great. options that are, you know, have great food, throw them in the, throw them in the comments anyway. Like, even if you're not, you can still move in that direction without saying, okay, cold turkey. Sorry, not turkey, cold, <laughs> yeah. cold tofu. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, dude, I, I I think that I'm I'm really really hoping that these dialogues can be something that people can point to and go, hey, they're talking to each other, and they're not screaming and they're not yelling all caps and they're not throwing ad homs out. Uh, they're just engaging. You know, if we're gonna make a decision, we want to because it's the right decision and for the right reasons. And um, I, I, I hope that you've seen that we've been open and vulnerable to the things we don't know, and you have been as well, and we hope that this can be an example for other people to do the same. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the, thanks for the call, guys. Absolutely. You, and if you want to call in about any God questions in the future, Andy, we absolutely would love to talk. <laughs> you yeah, 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 I got you. All okay, right. Okay, bye. Take okay. care. <laughs>